Hey guys, Hayden here, back with another 11 plus verbal reasoning video. Thank you for joining me. Today in this question type, we have a sentence and there is a word in capital letters in the middle of this sentence and it is missing three consecutive letters. They have been taken out of the word. Now, if you're not sure what consecutive means, it simply means back to back to back next to each other. So there's no letters in between the three missing letters. They come out as one chunk together. And as you can see from the five options, it's our job to pick the three letters that could be put back in this word to make a correctly spelled word. And even more importantly, a word that actually makes sense in the sentence. Because you'll see in a moment, there are a few options that we could put into the word LED to make a correctly spelled word, but only one of them actually makes sense within the context of that sentence. So that's really, really important. So let's go ahead and have a little look at this one together then. So my first top tip when you're answering these questions is once you've read the sentence and you've kind of got the context in your mind, a small bird, something on a fence, think to yourself, right, what kind of word is this for a start? Is this an adjective? Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it a doing word? I think it's very clearly going to be a verb, isn't it here? A small bird mm, on a fence. Like this is clearly the doing word. And then I think to myself, okay, right. Are there any clues within verbs I can use? Well, something else happens in here, ED. I think when I see ED, I think it's very, very likely that this word ends in ED, which means to me, the three letters that have been taken out are either gonna slot into here in between the L and the ED at the end, or they're actually gonna start the word and it's gonna be something old, something old, ash old. Doesn't really make any sense, does it? Okay, so I'm kind of just for a bit of common sense, a bit of logic. I'm trying to break this down as to where these words could go. And my and my next tip is, you could also start like guessing what it could be. You could start thinking, okay, what if it did begin with L? What could it be? Maybe I can try some options in here. What if I put ash in there? I would get the word lashed. Oh, now that is a word, isn't it? Like so if someone lashed out, it means they got really cross, really angry. So have I got the answer? I've got a real word. That's how you spell lashed. Done, right? No, because remember at the start I said <clears throat> it has to make sense in the context of the sentence. A small bird lashed on a fence doesn't make any sense. So that is not my answer. But we're getting there, right? We get the idea now. So if we scan these other ones, I wonder if any sounds sort of jump out at us as to going in the middle here. Lashed, uh, maybe like hummed, doesn't make any sense. Or hum hummled, hummled, maybe hum goes at the start. No, it doesn't make any sense. Hummled, rumbled, like rumbled, but rum rumbled. L lended. Did the bird lend? Maybe the lended Dylan some money? Here you go, Dylan, have some money on a fe fence. Doesn't make any sense. And land, of course, I've left, I've been a fool and skipped past the one, the answer is of course B. Watch, if I do L-A-N-D-E-D, -E -D, I've put it in the middle here between L-E-D, I've got the word landed. So that's how these questions work, guys. We're gonna work through a few more of these together. I've got a few other tips for you as the questions get harder throughout the video, so do stick around until the end. When I give you my actual hardest one, I've left until last for you to solve in the comments as well. So here's the next question. This time I'm gonna read it to you and I want you to have a go. So the, qu the sentence says, the teacher explained the problem, yeah. Slee, sly, well that says sly right now, but we've got three letters missing. So use all the tips from the first one to have a go at this yourself. Okay, what could it be? We're well, looking at this, we've got O, oh, lot, lie, low, rot. Hmm. O oh kind of makes me think of slowly. Maybe that works. The teacher explained the problem slowly. Fantastic. I feel like I've already worked out the context. And actually, the more I think about it, a bit like the last one, the suffix ly is really common, isn't it? Like words that end in ly. And again, using what I said last time, this is quite clearly going to be an adverb, right? Because I've got the verb here, and this is telling us how the verb happens. The teacher explained the problem, and this is adding more to the verb. So all these things are coming in now. I think this makes sense. It's going to be an adverb, ends in ly. A lot of adverbs end in ly. I reckon it either starts with s, or again, it, it ends in sli. So something sli, like lot sli, lie sli, o oh, sli. That doesn't really make any sense. I think it's going to be s, something, 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 ly. Okay? So next thing is to do is to think, if we think it's going to be slowly, this says O, we're missing the O sound. People will often jump to that as an answer. But remember, it has to be spelled correctly. So just try it. Does that make any sense? Because people fall to this trap all the time. Slowly. That doesn't say slowly. Another thing you can do is just write out the word you think it's going to be. I know slowly is spelled like this. And that really quickly identifies to me that the missing three letters are L-O-W, which is actually D. 
not A. So there's loads of little things you can do with these questions to help you, but you'll notice I took a lot of notes, right? Trying to do these all in your head all the time is, it, is not going to be the best way of being accurate as you possibly can in these questions. You must write down notes where possible. Okay, we're getting the idea of these questions, so we've got to take the three letters and we've got to put them back into the word to make it be spelled right and work in the context of the sentence. Easy, right? Now, if you're liking this video and you think, oh, I want to practice more of this and I want to practice more verbal reasoning in general with you, Hayden, and, you know, Dylan from the other videos, he's all right as well, I suppose, then you should check out our website, Parents. Use this QR code right here or the link in the description to head over to our website. If you make an account, you can access some of our lessons for free. And we've got hundreds of them for year four, year five and year six. And in these lessons, they are premium length lessons longer than these YouTube videos and you can download a worksheet to go over each one as well for some independent practice that come with answers and a video walkthrough as well. So everything is there. It's all packaged up to make excellent progress. We've had nothing but five-star reviews since we made this. So do go and check it out. There's a few freebies on there to get started with. Back to this video then. So here's our next question. This time, completely over to you. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to give you any context, nothing. It's all on to you now. So pause the video, have a go. Hopefully, based on the last two examples we did, you're looking at this word and thinking, ah, ing. I see this suffix all the time. I think it's very, very, very likely that this word is going to end in ing. It's not guaranteed, by the way. If I was making a really hard question, I'd try and think of something that went in here just to throw you off. But it's a good place to start. You know, it's, it's not an, it's a very reasonable, logical place to think what, well, you know, ing is probably going to be it, the word. So let's read the context. Everyone laughed at the dog, mm, bubbles. Okay, ing, I think it's gonna be a verb. So it's gonna be a doing word again. Everyone's laughing at the dog. The dog's doing something to the bubbles, right? The dog eating, eating bubbles. No, that wouldn't have a C in it. So it's not gonna be E. That would be a good one, wouldn't it? E-A-T, I-N-G, but it doesn't work. So let's have a look at our options. Has, art, and, her, and pin. Hmm, interesting. So some of them I think obviously won't go in like pin. Because if we put pin here, we get kaping, or we put it before, we get pincing which doesn't really make any sense. Everyone laughed at the dog pincing bubbles. Doesn't make sense. Okay, let's try something else. Interestingly, what happens here is this C, I'm gonna tell you right now, does start the word. And the next point I want to make is to show you, I don't know why I did a little I there. That's very bizarre, isn't it? Capital I, please. What I wanna show you is how sounds can change sometimes when we put words back in. So at the moment that says king, right? Not, not how you spell king, but it says it's, it's a cut. There's no reason to think that's making a different sound. But let's say I used either D or A. What would happen when I when the next letter is an H? It becomes a ch, and then we start thinking completely different. Ah, what could the dog be doing? Everyone was everyone after the dog ch ch ch, ing bubbles. Oh, maybe they were. And I look at these options and I go, oh, maybe they were chasing bubbles. So the word has makes this become chasing. So it's a lot harder because the sounds are changing a lot. Now again, if we're doing this all in your head, you might not notice that you're not looking at the word in front of you and you might not make those sound changes you might go cohazing mm, cohering mm, carting mm, canding do you know what i mean you might not be thinking oh if i can see it in front of me i know this makes a ch sound now so that's my next tip there guys if you need to try lots of options and see the way the sounds change then do it it's very important but biggest tip we got there was recognizing the ing and the fact it's a verb and that really kind of helped speed us up everyone laughed at the dog chasing bubbles i mean that probably would be quite funny okay here's your next one so everything in mind um yeah have a go i think sometimes i don't know about you but i think sometimes the word jumps out and i'm hoping it did for you on this one more than the other ones because i looked at that and i just kind of felt like i knew what the word was going to be they should a sandwich before the long journey. When I see sh, again, I'm not thinking um, suffixes now, I'm thinking, I reckon this word starts with sh, and then we've got a d on the end. And if it's a d on the end, it's probably, probably an e here, right? Like that's very, very likely. And again, it's a verb, right? It's, it's an action, something, a sandwich. What could, what could they, so there's more than one person, have done to a sandwich, which is one sandwich, before the long journey? The only thing that jumps out to me is shared right? They shared a sandwich. Now, I think a lot of people would jump to shared in their mind straight away. And here's where the actual trick lies in these questions. This is where they're, they're pesky, they get you. The 11 plus exams, they know that people would think shared quite quickly. And as soon as people see this word here, air, 
which sounds exactly like what we're missing here, right? We're missing the air sound from shared. They put A as their answer and move on. Can you see why that's a problem? Yeah, it sounds right, but look, let's write it out. Let's put air in here, A, I, R. It would kind of say shared, but that's not how you spell shared, right? That's not it, we're missing it. So we need to really go back and use our own spellings to help us. That's how you spell shared. We're missing A, R, E, we're missing R. So here's the funny thing, just to summarize. A says air, and we're missing the sound air. E says R, but is the actual correct answer. Does that make sense? So you've just got to really think about how sounds change all the time. Cool. Right. We're on the right track here, guys. We're nearly finished already, and we're going to go on to now the hardest questions of all. So here's my next one. I think this one's quite tricky, and I'll let you have a go first. I think this one is similar to the last one, wouldn't you say, in terms of maybe the word is fairly straightforward to work out. It might have taken a bit of thought, but there's not many things that could be, particularly with a V, right? The V kind of gives it away. Like there's not that many words with a V and these letters around them. He balanced something books under one arm. We know it's books, okay? It's describing more than one, it means more than one book, okay? So what's it gonna be? Sev, straight away I'm thinking several. Are you thinking several? Now here's the real challenge, a bit like the last one, but even more amped up here. Which one of these is going to help us spell several? Because that's not a word we spell all the time. So here's what a lot of children will do. Sev, oh, and they, they know this bit here makes the roll sound or ro, ro, sevra sound. I'm not, I'm not sure what, sevaral, A-R-E, is that it? Several. that looks about right. If you don't know how to spell, that looks about right. Is it sevaral, several? that looks a bit wrong. Is it sev, I'm trying all of them here, sev era, all in the middle, several, that looks about right as well. Is it just the sound all? Is it raw, several, raw, that sounds about, you see the problem here guys, right? They Every single answer is very cleverly, carefully thought of to try and trap you, whether it's sounds or spellings or what. So that's where the kind of final challenge can come in these questions, is actually just being able to spell the word. So several is actually spelled like this. And again, if you know that, the best thing you could have possibly done was just write down the word yourself and literally just find the three letters that are missing from this and go, right, it's E-R-A, it's era, that's my answer, okay? But there we are. Lots of things to think about this question. It's a bit more complex than you'd think, isn't it? Just simply taking out three letters, three consecutive letters from a word. But it's certainly worth practicing. It's one of my favorite question types for that reason, because there's so many different complexities to it. And I'm going to leave you with this. A bit mean, but I thought it was a good question. No, nah, it's not that hard, actually. Who am I kidding? You guys can do it, obviously. You've just watched this video. It's going to be easy to you now. So let me know. Comment down below with your answer. Rain something through my jacket. What three consecutive letters am I missing from this word here? And uh, bonus points, if you can give me any of your tips. For example, did you work out whether it's an adjective or, or a verb? Did you work out whether there's any particular part of this word that was useful to help you start thinking? All the things I've mentioned in this video. Parents, don't forget to check out our 11 Plus Prep resources on our website. Get started for free by making an account. There's a few bits on there you can use. And guys, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like and do all those good things. See you, see you then.